Change some of the deepest buried NBT tags with just a few clicks. Hey guys, it's Chad. We've covered the Universal Minecraft editor before here on OMG Craft, but recently the creator, Matt G, has added three new modifications that are super easy to access for some really, really cool functions. This will allow you just with a few clicks to add some really, really cool changes to different mobs in the game. There's 30 different additions. I'm just gonna cover a few of my favorites. His the original video is down in the description below so you can check out all 30 different uh, things that you can change down there. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So here we are inside of Minecraft and I have a few things here to demonstrate some of the changes, easy changes that can be done now in the Universal Minecraft editor. So first we have a villager who, if you listen, will make quite a lot of noise. Hey. Maybe. There we go. That, that was your line. That was your cue. Uh, we have a creeper. We have a bunny who lo looks very similar to the surroundings, who's a golden bunny. We have a pig. We have a really cool end crystal, a sword on the ground that's just a normal sword. It's just a normal diamond sword just sitting there on the ground. A chest that is named chest. Keep your eye on that. A red bed a head and a banner. So we're going to easily, quickly and easily change all of these with the Universal Minecraft Editor. So first let's go ahead and save and quit. So here we are with the Universal Minecraft Editor. Remember you have to head on over to the website, type in your name and email address, and then the download link will be emailed to you. You can't find the download just on the website. You do have to go through that extra step. Uh, let me also say that this m works better with the Xbox 360 version uh, of Minecraft than with any other version. I'm using Java just because that's just what I happen to be at and it's easy for me to use. Um, so there's a few features, there's a few more features in the Xbox 360 version than there is in the Java version, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, the A New World is the world uh, that I uh, created for us to uh, play around with. And uh, as and remember, I did a previous uh, tutorial on this before, so I'm really only going to cover some of the quick and easy ways to edit some stuff uh, in this one. Uh, so uh, to get started, it obviously looks very, very blank. You could load in a specific chunk if you wanted to. You could look at the at the various players or some of the world settings or some of the files uh, that's in this save. But I find the easiest way to navigate is by clicking this little diamond icon and it opens up the specialty mods area. And there's already a really, really, really nice thing loaded in. You don't have to go and grab this. This is already in the install file, which is the search in chunks. So let's go ahead and click that. And it opens up this window. I'm gonna be using this window quite a lot. So I'm gonna set it over here onto the side. You can see that this is a search function to search within chunks all over your entire world for specific things. So you can search for entities. You could select a specific type of entity. You could type in the entity ID and you can search within the overworld, the nether and the end. You can also do that for tile entities, as you can see, or you can do that with NBT tags or specific blocks if you have the block ID and uh, the damage value. So we're going to use this to look for our entities and our tile entities because that is all we're using to show off in this video. And a really cool feature is if you just hit a space inside of the search field and hit search, it will search all of them. And I don't have very many uh, entities and tile entities. Um, and w whenever, and so, you know, not a whole bunch show up, but of course, if you were in a normal Minecraft world, uh, if here, we can just open up another one. So I'm here in Chunky and we're gonna do the same thing. And I'm just going to search for any entity at all. And you can see, oh my God, there's so many entities. Uh, this is an actual vanilla world uh, where I didn't turn off uh, any type of spawning or anything. So you can see there's all sorts of these rabbits and inside of each and every single one of these, there's all sorts, there's a falling block, <laughs> there's falling sand in this one. So the idea is that you'd be able to search for something specific. So if you wanted like a pig, you'd be able to search pig, hit enter, 
and then all of the occurrences of pigs would be able to show up and you'd be able to jump over uh, to them. So let's jump back over to our world. So after you search for your entities, mine's so much simpler now because I just created this world just to show off uh, these features, double clicking on one of these entities will bring you to the chunk that that entity is in. You still have to navigate to the entity and all you have to do is see these uh, this level uh, tag, click that, the entities tag, open that up and there you go those are all your entities you can also see this tile entities so that is just a little a few under this will have your tile entities that is in this specific chunk as well uh, this is how minecraft works with all of the things is you have one chunk that is a 16 by 16 block area and then everything in that chunk is stored in these nbt tags so you can go in there and edit them. So let's start off with the villager. And uh, and by the way, these are all in this order. I happen to do it in the same order in the world just to make it all, uh, you know, make sense for you guys. Uh, this order will probably be uh, out of order if you're making your own world or editing your own world. But let's start with the villager. So instead of going into this villager and changing all these weird random things, it's like I don't even understand any of this. All you have to do is right click and see these easy drop downs. You can see that this is going to be a very easy situation. So let's start off with the entity properties. Many of these entities will have these entity properties. And you notice he was making a lot of noise before. We can turn him to silent. We can make him invulnerable. We can make it so he won't pick up my other loot. And we can make it with no AI so he won't be walking around everywhere. And we have to accept these changes by clicking the check mark. Otherwise, they will not be saved. We can change his position. We can uh, add a custom name. So let's name him Carl. Carl. Just just C A R L. Carl. And we can. Oh, I didn't actually click there. There we go. Now his name is Carl. We can change his trades. So we could go in here and actually delete trades by hitting the delete key. We can add a new trade by double clicking. And then I can change any of these by right clicking. So let's have the trade be uh, some jungle leaves. For some jungle leaves, uh, he's going to give us um, some diamonds, diamond blocks. Absolutely. And actually, I can change this to be a count of 64. This is a really lucrative trade. Just let me tell you that. Uh, you can turn off the max uses. You can turn off it and on if it rewards uh, XP. And you can also suppress the ability for that villager to generate more trades after this trade has been accomplished a certain amount of time. This is amazing doing all of this just in a nice, easy to see menu without digging in to any of the NBT tags. Believe me, this is awesome. So uh, now that we have that, we can change uh, his profession as well from uh, the blacksmith to librarian to nitwit to whatever we want. Nitwit's kind of fun because uh, this is this is now uh, in the Java edition, but uh, it's nice to nice to have a nitwit around, right? So let's move on to the creeper. You can change, of course, all of the other things that we changed. Let's give him a custom name. I'm going to call him Boom Boom. And uh, let's just go ahead and save that. We can change his explosion or we can make him powered, which makes him look like one of the charged creepers. So let's go ahead and click uh, the uh, check mark on that. Next is the rabbit. So we can change, of course, all of the other properties. We can change his position and things like that. But the rabbit type. So we can make him a killer bunny or a, a black and white bunny or a gold bunny or a salt and pepper bunny. All of the colors of the bunny. And we're going to, of course, make him a killer bunny. The pig has a quick toggle, which you can add a saddle. So let's give him a saddle. The ender crystal has some really, really, really cool stuff. First off, you can um, add all of these uh, characteristics as, as well. But you can change where the beam goes to. So let's add it uh, to zero, zero. And let's just do it basically right where the player, if the player ever teleported to zero, zero, um, that is where uh, the beam would be. Uh, and so also we can add a bedrock bottom, which is hard to do in the normal game because you can obviously craft them. But when you put them down on obsidian, they don't have a bedrock bottom. Next, 
is the item that we dropped. If we click into here, you can see that this is a diamond sword. Of course, I could, I guess, change the item to whatever item I want. Uh, let's keep it the diamond sword. Uh, but then we can change it so that it cannot be picked up and it will never despawn. So let's save those. That's enough for our entities. Let's move on to tile entities. Let's just hit space, hit search, and you can see that there are two chunks that our tile entities are in. Let's start off with the chest right here. So you can give this chest a custom name. So let's call this OMG Chad's chest. There we go. Name it that. Uh, we can also change what is inside the chest. Now, this was uh, here before, but this is like so easy, so nice. All I have to do is right click and then we can change to be whatever the heck we want in here. We can, uh, w what should we add? The cat disc. I love cats so much. Let's just add the cat disc inside of there. Uh, and one also cool thing is that you could always go in here and edit this around and give it an enchantment. Let's give it a blast protection enchantment, a, a max blast protection enchantment. Why not? Um, and so there you go. So you can add stuff inside the chest and rename the chest. The bed, you can easily change the bed color. It started off as red. Let's give it a orange color. We're going to change both beds in order to make sure that we get the correct one. Finally, let's move on to a different chunk. We're finally working within a different chunk, so we're gonna have to navigate to our tile entity. And let's change this mob head. We're gonna change this from human to a dragon, why not? And the banner has a custom banner and editor. So you can change the color. So let's change this to be cyan. Let's add uh, another one to, by double clicking. We can change what type of pattern this is, what type of uh, color this is. You can add more layers. I mean, this is just really, really incredible that you're able to uh, to change everything inside of this banner from within a menu. Oh my gosh, absolutely crazy. So there we go. We can change uh, the mob heads and the banner. So all of this is done. This is just a few examples. There's a lot more. There's over, there's 30 uh, new, easy to access uh, right click options for all the different things. Um, but let's go ahead and save this just to get a sense of what we've changed. So here we are. You can see that quite a lot has changed since we were here last. Uh, this is the first change that's obvious, but let's just go down the line. First is Carl, our lovely villager. He has a new coat, which is very nice, and he will trade you jungle leaves for diamonds. And also, listen to that. Listen to that. Silence. That's right. Carl is now quiet. He's also not moving around because we removed his brain. We turned off his AI so he won't move. Uh, and I also believe, did we choose invulnerable? I think, I think he might not be able to die anymore. So that's a big improvement. Carl's life. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. We didn't choose invulnerable. That was maybe, I don't know what I said. I don't know what I chose, uh, but invulnerable was not it. Moving on to Mr. Boom Boom. He has been renamed and he has that super awesome uh, super car charged creeper effect around him. Next is our bunny who has indeed been <laughs> renamed to the killer bunny and has the killer bunny uh, 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 skin on him. Also is the pig who now has a nice saddle. Very, very nice. Next is this really cool in crystal that is pointing at to exactly where we wanted 6500 right there. Looks really, really cool, I gotta say, uh, with the uh, crazy beam and then also the bedrock base. You also may have noticed that as I walked over this sword, it didn't pick up. And let me tell you, that will be there for forever because those are the things that we changed. Next is this chest, which we can open up, and we have the music disc, which has the blast protection enchantment. And it's also named OMG Chad's chest. Of course, this is now orange. This is now a dragon head. And this banner has the pattern that we randomly came up with while recording the video. The Universal Minecraft Editor is one of the nicest and easiest to use Minecraft editors uh, that really is where you're able to dig down into NBT data, but as well as having some really, really nice user <laughs> customizability. 
just had to do it. Uh, and so I would really, really uh, suggest uh, checking that out. You can check out the description down below for a link to the website where you can enter your name and email to get the Universal Minecraft editor. Big thanks to Matt G for creating this. There's also his original video, like I said before, in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching this episode of OMG Craft. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like. Please subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash OMG Craft for future videos. And also make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. I'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.